she's the reason why I fought so hard and you know my husband as well and so not being able to see her it was very discouraging. Hi I'm Chelsea Kiefer. I am 30 years old and I've been a hairstylist for uh, over a decade. I am married and I have a daughter. When I had my stroke I had actually already gone to the hospital. I was in the ER when it happened. Um, I had been having a constant UTI that I wasn't able to get rid of. One day I woke up with pain on my right side. Was it my right side? My right side by my rib. Um, and I was just, I remember being in a lot of pain back there. It had been a couple days. I thought it was my back. After a few days had gone by, I realized that, you know, maybe it was my kidney and maybe because of my UTI and how long I had had it, that maybe it traveled to my kidney and I was maybe having a kidney infection or something. So I um, went to the ER. They you know, said, yeah, we think you're having kidney stones. So we're going to get you a CT to just um, confirm that. A CT tech came and took me back to go get the CT done. She had put me in the little waiting area in the hospital where the CT room is. Within a minute of me sitting in that little waiting area, I just started feeling really weird. Um, my left side felt really heavy and um, I just like a, a warm sensation going down like my left side from like the back of my neck all the way down to my left arm and it just felt like warm. Like the best way I can describe it is almost like somebody was pouring like warm water or something down my side. I went to go yell for help and that's when I really realized something was wrong because um, when I went to go talk it was like just nothing proper was coming out. Like I could hear myself and nothing was like making sense. It just really sounded like um, noise. As soon as the nurses in the hallway made eye contact with me, they both looked at each other and yelled stroke. And that's all I remember. And they had me lay down. Within a few seconds, the alarm in the hospital was going off, seeing that there was a stroke going on. And the CT tech came in and said, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to do a CT on her abdomen to figure out if she has kidney stones. So they were like, well, switch that to her head because we need to figure out you know, if she's having a stroke. And within a few minutes of me being in the CT, I, they already had somebody down there reading it and they said, yeah, she's having a stroke, there's a clot. And so they started working on me getting transferred to be metaflighted out. I could feel like my whole left side just super heavy. Like I couldn't feel it, but it just was like, I could just tell everything was like weighed down on that side. And um, so I just knew that that's what was going on. And, I had a burning headache right on my right side of my head. I just remember it felt like fire and um, like a burning sensation, almost like fire ants were like, you know, attacking my head or something. My husband ended up uh, showing up before I was able to get metaflighted. And yeah, I mean, we didn't know really what was to come from the point of me being at that hospital to getting metaflighted to the new hospital. And so basically just my husband and I had to, he had to say his goodbyes potentially not knowing if he was going to be seeing me at the new hospital or not because we didn't know what was going to happen in between then. And um, that was a really hard thing just mainly because I couldn't say things that I would have liked to say to him because I wasn't able to speak. Um, and so that was really difficult. Once I got to the hospital, I of course was up in the ICU for like four days. And um, the hardest thing at first, of course, was um, probably not being able to speak because there was obviously a lot of things that I wanted to ask questions about, like what was going on and um, you know, kind of fend for myself, but you can't really do that when you can't talk. They took me from ICU to the lower floor where then I was stable and I stayed there for about a week. Um, you know, they started getting me to try and use my left side and try and get up and walk and try and do things like that. So, you know, immediately they started me with PT 
and um, occupational therapy and things like that and speech. I'd say the most frustrating thing was the learning how to talk again. Although that did thankfully came, come back pretty quickly for me. Talking took about, you know, two and a half, three weeks before I was able to really start talking really clearly where people could understand me. Um, and even then it still was like, still stuttering, still coming out funky, but at least I couldn't communicate. Using my left hand, I'd say was like the least frustrating thing for me. It was probably the walking that was really frustrating just because I remember even having dreams while I was in the hospital and at the acute rehab. And I don't know if I was having dreams about walking specifically because, or if my dreams just had me walking in them and then I'd wake up and I would realize that I couldn't walk. I remember taking my first couple of steps and we actually got it on film. I think my husband might have been there when he was visiting. It was my first couple of real strong steps. I had taken some steps before prior to that, but it was like holding on to the side railing and things like that. But this was like my first real steps. I think I might have been using a cane, but still like it was like, for me, it was like a huge milestone. And um, I just remember bawling, like I just broke down because I'm so proud of myself, first of all. And second of all, I was super proud that my husband could be there to watch it because it was like I wanted to obviously show off for him. And that was a super cool high point in my recovery. And also being able to see my daughter because um, I wasn't able to see her a whole lot while I was in the hospital. So when she'd come to visit, it was um, really, really, really special for her to come and visit me. Um, and I'd say the low part would be going so long without seeing my daughter. Um, my husband was able to come and visit almost every single day and sometimes multiple times a day, but the hospital that I was at and the acute rehab that I was staying at didn't allow kids to come inside because of COVID stuff. And so um, that was super tough because I would go, you know, days and days and days in a time without seeing my daughter and we would have to schedule like my PT to be outside and everybody would have to clear it for me to go outside. I was able to see her three times um, while I was at that rehab and that was a huge special highlight and high moment. But of course, when I couldn't see her it was probably the lowest moments. And she's the reason why I fought so hard and you know, my husband as well. And so not being able to see her, it was very discouraging. I am, I mean, I'd say 98% better. Um, I have lots of brain fog um, and like delayed, um, I don't know what you would call it. Sometimes I, I just forget what I'm gonna say a lot. Um, and I have a really bad memory um, since then. But for the most part, like, everything's pretty good. When I'm really tired, I definitely notice my left side gets tired more than my right side. Um, I've even noticed, you know, when I'm super tired and if I've worked a long day, because I do work, uh, you know, behind the chair as a hairstylist again. And um, on uh, days where I'm standing and walking a little bit much, I can tell like my left side's just a little bit, a little bit slower than my right side is. That's actually when I, you know, kind of came to the assumption and realization that I was probably not gonna be able to return behind the chair anymore. I was gonna retire and just, you know, no longer be working behind the chair. And um, that was really, really tough because, you know, it's kind of like it hit me, like this is what I've gotta do, you know, to survive, I guess I have to, just listen to my body and this is what my body wants right now is for me to retire but i was definitely shutting a door on a dream of mine um, that i didn't feel like i had fulfilled 100 percent quite yet i feel like i was only halfway to my goals when i finally was able to regain a significant amount of strength back on my left side um, and I, I just realized like, nope, I need to go back after it. I need to, I can't quit. Um, I'm not somebody to just sit home. I'm not somebody to give up on my dreams. So 
I'm gonna go for it and you know even if I have to take one plant a week I don't care it's just something like I need to do this for me and my mental health most of all and um, yeah and just to know that I can do it again it just was like a huge it was a, like I challenged myself like I knew I needed to do it you know I've already done so much and achieved so much in the year this time last year I would have never thought I could have um, I am behind the chair not just one day a week but actually four days a week and um, I started a YouTube channel for my hair content which is something that I've always wanted to do but I've just never had the guts to actually put myself out there like that the dreams not gonna chase you back you have to go after them so that's why I want to do all the things that I've wanted to do so I am actually going to be doing hair in Beverly Hills, which is huge and it's something that's, you know, every hairdresser's dream. Just trying to live out all of my personal dreams um, and also spend a lot more time with my family and learn balance because it's not something I had ever before. So thank you guys so much for watching and following along on this journey of mine. We hope that Chelsea is doing well. She's back working behind the chair now and is gradually working her way up to where she was before this all happened. As always, thanks for watching Happiest. If you liked this video, then make sure to follow our Instagram and TikTok pages for even more heartwarming content like this. And if you have any videos of your own you want to share, be sure to send them in.